Okay, we're in the video here. We got Colin Chartier. Is that how you say it? Charter? I'm afraid if I'm wrong. Just call him CC. CC gets busted for EPO. I'm shocked. I'm shocked. How do you get caught with EPO these days? Like, it's so easy to pass the tests. Right? He put, and it was, a, it was a random test. So it wasn't even a competition. He didn't have to answer the door. He didn't have to pick up his phone. He could have said, oh, sorry, guys. I was, I was staying down the road. Oh. I'm really sorry. You're allowed to miss drug tests with the uh, out of competition ones. You can miss around three out of 18 months, maybe more, depends on your excuse. All right. I'm shocked he got busted. Okay. Now, here we have a shoe, Nike Vaporfly. Now, my name is Drew Rider, aka Harley Johnstone. Okay. And if you don't like the truth, click off the video now. All right. If you want to be uh, realize what's going on, then keep watching the video. If you want to be educated, keep watching the video. If you want to have a better quality of life, keep watching the video. This is an ad ass. Uh, uh, Adios Pro 2. You know, what do these shoes all have in common? All right. They set world records. Or I should say that the men and women who wear these shoes have set world records and made lots and lots of money for Adidas and Nike. How much do you think these shoes cost to make? All right? How much does this shoe cost to make? What do you think? How much do they retail for? All right. <laughs> so, do you really think anyone out there who's winning world big races in these shoes is doing it clean? Or these shoes, or these shoes, all right? Do you really think that these African runners who are escaping poverty, all right, and Nike and Adidas scouts go to Kenya, Uganda, Ethiopia and say, hey, you got some natural talent. Come and join this running running clinic. We'll get you on the good shit. Let's go. You think they're going to say no to that? No, no, no. I, I just want to pick potatoes for $500 a year. I'm happy with that. My family can exist on $500 a year. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. You know what I mean? What you gonna do, all right? So that sets the level right up there, okay? It's the big brands pushing the performances. Nike, Adidas, the bike companies, the triathlon companies, they have got money and they will give it to people who can win so they can shield these products to the NPCs out there who go, oh my God, you took EPO, you're a naughty boy, you're a naughty girl, I'm unfollowing you, I'm gonna go follow such and such. Who's also on EPO, okay? You can't win you can't do these sub eight hour Ironmans with natural levels of hemoglobin, natural levels of pain tolerance, natural levels, natural levels of fatigue metabolite clearing, natural levels of mitochondrial efficiency. You cannot do that shit as a natural. You need painkillers, you need hormones, you need oxygen vector compounds, okay? And you need stimulants, okay? I'm not saying you should do these things, I'm saying these things are done. There's a carbon fiber plate in here, okay? There's little airbags in here, this shoe's orange. Facts, the champion athletes, swimming, running, triathlon, USC, etc. Juiced to the fucking gills. Put your earphones in. We're going to keep the language real here. This is how it is, people, all right? Stop being so naive. Go to Colin Cartier's, Cartier's uh, Instagram page. Oh, my God, I'm so disappointed. And you see all these guys like Sebastian Kino, whatever. Oh, you're cheated. It's like, dude, how fast did you do? You, you won Hawaii. You won Kona as a, as a natural. Yeah, did you? Really? <laughs> unicorns do exist. I mean, I don't have any proof unicorns don't exist, but Sebastian Canale, whatever his name is, he's a unicorn. Well, he exists. It exists, people. And it's just, it's a joke. Uh, it's a joke. It's like when Bradley Wiggins would throw shit at Lance. Yeah, Lance, I was trying to get caught with drugs. I was, I was just so shocked. I was so disappointed in Lance. You know, I think we should kick him out of the sport. Come on, Wigo. You know what I mean? Oh, Lance Armstrong was like, you know, what's my jiffy? But like, just come on, like this. I mean, w w when top athletes doped, throw shade at people who get caught, it's like just, just, just stay silent and say, I don't know, I don't know what's going on. You know, next question. You know, when they throw shade like that, like, now they jump on their Instagram page. Oh, you cheated. You know, I didn't cheat. It's like fuck, it, you did too. All right. And then people are like, oh, who's his coach and stuff like that. It's like, gang. All right, stop the witch hunt. All right, if you want to do a witch hunt, do a witch hunt on how fucking naive you are. It's a cutthroat world out there. If you don't, if you turn up to work and say to the boss, "Oh, I'm really tired. Like, oh, I just, I just need to sleep a bit more today. You know, I'm gonna have a week, just recovery week." Boss is like, "What? You want to keep your job? You turn up, you work hard. Take your pain, take an aspirin, take your caffeine, take your modafinil, take your hormones, whatever. Just get the job done." Okay, it's a cutthroat world out there and even more so in professional sport where the difference between getting the contract next year and paying your mortgage and feeding the kids or keeping the wife happy with hypergamy traits 
that's like a few seconds or even a few millimeters, okay? <laughs> in pro cycling, if you win the world champs, it's by a few millimeters sometimes. So if you think that drugs, performance enhancing drugs aren't part of the, the equation, the recipe to build that cake of performance, do witch hunt on that. That's next level naiveness. That level of naiveness, you know, like, is really going to fuck you up in life. Being so naive to how the world actually runs, okay? It's not a conspiracy theory. We've got eons and zillions of athletes who have been busted at the top, all right? Do you think Lance was the only one who was using EPO or blood doping or prednisone or testosterone or Adderall and shit and asthma puffers, all right? I remember when I was eight, getting an asthma puffer. My teacher was saying, Harley, have you got your drugs? And I was like, oh, 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 where are they? Here you go, Harley. <laughs> teacher giving me drugs, steroids to open up my lungs, corticosteroids to open up the airways, okay? Doping. Oh, you, you've got a doctor's prescription. You've got asthma. Everyone's got asthma at fucking 500 watts, all right? <laughs> so it's just it's just how it is, man. You know, it's it's no surprise if I was Colin, um, I would have just said, yeah, I'm, I'm going to hire a team of scientists. You know, I don't know how this got in my system. That's really weird. You know, because there's only 1% of people out there who really fucking get it. People like me go, yep, you got caught. That was pretty dumb. How'd you get busted? That's just, what? You know, I, and I'm curious. How did you get busted? Or what was your cycle, bro? Like, what, what, what did you use? In the, how many units? Intravenous, intramuscular? What were we doing? What were we doing? You using the insulin? Or like, what you, you know, like, how'd you get caught? Why'd you answer the door? Why'd you answer the phone? Bro. You know, like get, do those missed tests if you think they'd be glowing. It's just, I don't know. It's it's and then what happens with social media now? Boom, you get roasted. It, it becomes personal. People unfollow sponsors. Like, oh, you know, it's just it's a different world now. And I'm a social media uh, person. Uh, that's how I make my money for the last decade, and I really enjoy my job. And but it's so easy to get cancelled. You know, I I'm a I'm troll professional, non professional professional troll. Professional being unprofessional, I can say what I want, say the truth, it's all good. Uh, but these, these athletes out there, you know, boom, they're really walking on thin ice. It's like any moment you can get pinged, someone can snitch on you or whatever, and then the NPCs, they're coming for you. Okay, so it's, but people out there, it's it's business, man. It's fucking business. If you think Kip Choje and all those runners out there, you, if you think that they're clean, <laughs> Man, I've got some unicorn shit for you to sell. And bag, I've got bags of unicorn poo for your garden. I'll make your garden magical. $200 an ounce. Just the level of naiveness out there. The same triathletes that think they need disc brakes on their fucking TT bike. <laughs> and spending $200 on a wax chain from zero friction cycling or whatever. <laughs> it's like fucking hell. You know, or, or 50 bucks for a bag of a puck. Not a bag, a puck. A couple of pucks of like paraffin food grade wax all right and you got a friction frax and they've actually stated that the advantage of molten speed wax over some food grade paraffin wax with zero ptfe and molybdenum whatever is 0 0.12 watt you saving or 0.12 watt okay so 10 percent of one watt <laughs> so there's people paying all this money on disc brakes losing watts fancy wax chains getting you know like just for 0.12 watt and then doing a keto diet or just, it's just, it's just, it's a, uh, the, the level, it, well, Einstein said, never underestimate the stupidity of people, all right? Never underestimate the gullibility of people. It's easy to fool someone that can say they've been fooled because their egos don't want the, our delusions and illusions destroyed because we don't like being wrong. I love being wrong. Right? I live to be wrong and to help people, but I love being wrong. Why do I love being wrong? Because it means I found a better way. All right, I found a better way. Okay. Yesterday I'm using this PTFE stuff on the chain wax. I'm thinking, do we even need this stuff? Maybe it's safe. Maybe it's not. But why are we even using it? So I did a bit more research. You don't even fucking need it. All right. Why do we need PTFE on our chain wax? Why? Maybe if you're riding mud, it helps. I don't know. But why? Why do we need PTFE? Question. Why? Okay. Ask questions. Why? Versus just go. Okay. The marketing got me all horny. Let's go with that. All right, EPO is part of the game, man. You cannot run a marathon as quick as those guys and girls do without EPO. You can't do the Ironman as quick without it. Right? And it's not just EPO, it's prednisone. It's just, prednisone just gives you that, that pump, that mental, physical pump, and it opens up the airways even more. You got the, 
The puffers as well open up the airways. You've got the stimulants, Adderalls, Modafinils to delay fatigue and keep sharp in the, med, in the head. They've got antidepressants as well just to like be like a fucking stormtrooper out there. The hormones because your thyroid's getting tanked and all the crazy training and the stimulants and the fatigue, all this stuff. You, you, your testosterone's driving through the floor, which can be good for weight loss, but then again, you could be also getting anemic and have low glycogen partitioning. So a little bit of test or nandrolone can help with the enhanced glycogen partitioning. So you've got all these, just balancing all these hormones and stuff in the body, the mitochondrial efficiency and all things like that. This ain't gonna be happening natural, all right? And again, this is where I lose people. I lose so many people. Oh, no, 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 no. no. Because their egos can't handle that they're going to be wrong or that they are wrong or they've been lied to. And people say, oh, no, no. Just like you saw in the last few years with all the, you know, all the lockdowns and stuff. And now on TV, it's like, what's going on in Australia? It's like nothing, nothing even happened, all right? <laughs> all these people being bankrupt to losing their homes, sleeping in cars in the name of, of health. <laughs> and it's like, well, hang on, like, it seemed like we did more damage to people than what was going to be potentially done or was getting done. You know, so the people don't want to question that because most people out there are overwhelmed they're doing calories in, calories out, which means they're just like running on fumes. They're just like, no, no I'm over on disease. They've got kids, they've got mortgages, they've got all the weight issues and body dysmorphia and because of all the social media and all the bullshit, the filters, everything. So people got all this shit going on and you throw a little bit of truth on there, just you just got to crack the house of cards. Okay, that's why I have such a small, I've only got like 200 something K subs. And I've had hundreds of millions of views because people watch my shit and they're like, unsubscribe, this guy's crazy. I can't, do, can't deal with the reality. Can't do that reality. Or maybe I can a little bit, but not not now. See you later. Bye. It's just too overwhelming. Okay. So but I'm never going to change because someone has to be over here saying, hey guys and girls, this is how reality is. Okay. I'm never going to change. I'm always going to be like this, the truth bomber, because people need to wake the fuck up. Drugs are part of sports. It's like eating breakfast. Okay. Drugs are part of society. Okay. Drugs ain't going nowhere. People out there high as fuck on caffeine and modafinil or whatever, or on hormones given... These athletes, oh, you, you took drugs. Do you mean age group of triathlons, triathletes take drugs? Well, my doctor prescribed me. You're still on performance enhancing drugs, motherfucker. All right? Well, I'm not cheating because I've got a prescription. Are you still on performance enhancing drugs? There's plenty of people out there who don't want to take any drugs. All right? No caffeine, no aspirin, nothing, nada. No hormones, nothing, nada. They're the natties. And who are they? We don't know because they're at the back. Okay? So it's, it's just how it is. It's just how it is. I've been a full natty athlete. No caffeine, no painkillers, nothing. And I've been an enhanced athlete. And it's night and day difference. <laughs> it's night and day difference. So if you think that someone's taking EPO just once, or I just want to experiment in, as a pro athlete, see what it's all about. It's like, they've been taking it for fucking years, okay? You can't win big events as a natty. Unless, unless everyone got a flat tire, or everyone took the wrong course. You know, and they went off... 5k off course and you just kept going straight in the right, right. maybe there unicorns do exist i've never seen one i've never ridden one i've never seen unicorn shit or well, marketing says i have but you know it's just this is how it is juiced to the fucking gills all the big names girls or guys but they're so nice they're just a nice person a nice person wouldn't take drugs <laughs> what the fuck nice people don't want to win nice people don't want to have money nice people want to provide their family just because you take EPO doesn't mean you're a bad person. It means you're a professional athlete who goes, this is a financial decision here. I want money. I want fame. Give me the EPO. That's how it is, okay? And you've got plenty of athletes out there who aren't going to take it because, one, they don't want to get caught, which I understand. They don't want their family and their shame. And that's okay, but they don't want the winners bad enough. When you want the win and you're going to take risks, then that's the definition of a real professional athlete. And if you're not going to do that, that's fine, but you'll never, ever, ever be as successful financially, fame-wise, as the people out there. E even, like, look at Lance Armstrong. Do you think Lance Armstrong regretted taking drugs? What if Lance didn't take anything, okay? Would he have the money and fame he has now? Exactly. How much money did Lance have to pay back? <laughs> How much money do any of those Kenyan marathoners have to pay back when they get busted for the EPO? Fucking zero. Maybe some lawyer fees if they want to defend it. But how much is you're basically robbing banks, and if you get caught, you don't take any money, pay any money back, and you don't go to jail. How many professional athletes actually went to jail for doping? I think someone got a suspended sentence once. Hundreds of thousands of dollars, millions of euros up for grabs. The only penalty is a bit of public shame, and if you just deny it and say, "Yeah, didn't do it," don't know, or "Yeah, I just I was, oh, made a mistake," I made, I'm really sorry, I made a mistake. You know, the temptation is real, people. 
think I, I would take fucking, uh, I would take PEDs if my job depended on it, for sure. I'd take PEDs just for ex personal experimentation, for YouTube and to be able to talk with conviction and authority. Imagine if I was a Kenyan guy who's 18, who could run sub 10, 10K natty. And I'm thinking, gee, I've got this natural talent. I could take, you know, $50 of hormones a month and have a crack at winning some big marathons, set myself up for life money-wise. I don't have to worry about money ever again. Do you think I'm going to go, no, nah, I wouldn't do that. Would you do that? You would as well, okay? Let's stop being unrealistic. So as soon as one person dopes with talent, then that sets the bar, okay? Now, everyone, if they wanted that bar, they have to dope as well. And the only way to get rid of doping is to take the money and fame away from professional sport. That ain't going to happen. Do you know why? Because these big brands, they want more money, okay? Professional sport is just aggressive sport funded by money to make more money. How much these shoes cost to make? How much they retail for? There you go.